And there we go. Right, I was convinced I'd done a little intro video on this, and I haven't. So this is actually after I've done the work. Um, so, a bit cheating, but I'll explain it. Uh, so I got this for free. It was on Marketplace, I think. Uh, it was free. They dragged it out of a barn uh, and said, oh, I don't think it works, so come and get it. Um, it's a Bluebird Lawn Coma F20B. Now, I'm not going to lie to look what a Lawn Coma was. I think it's the same as a Scarifier, basically. Um, it's got tines that spin that I think are possibly meant to be sharper than they are, but that's what I've got. Um, and lots of them. It's a very industrial bit of kit. So they spin round quickly and they swing down and hit your lawn and they scarify it by removing all of the thatch and flat grass and stuff like that. I'm not very technical when it comes to lawn care but um, it's a very industrial machine. Uh, I had a modern, I can't remember what brand it was, but like a modern version of this as it were, uh, like a DIY version and it was all like tin plate stuff, it was, it was horrible and it flexed and this thing does not, this thing's a monster. Uh, five horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine. Uh, it did have some tags on. I think it had, one of the tags said something like, uh, repair if possible, if not scrap. So it was obviously in a repair shop. They, some owner had probably taken it to it at some point and said, see if we can get this going. And they obviously had because it hadn't been scrapped. It was back in this person's house that they'd bought. Um, yeah, that's it really. Uh, it's belt driven. Belt drives under there. Uh, we've got, that's the clutch. And we've got a nice height adjuster, which although it looks exactly like this when I got it, uh, it all worked. I didn't have to do anything to this. So that adjusts, that lifts it up so that it doesn't touch the ground. Drops it down for use. You can see, look. If I lift it. And the screw there adjusts very finely the height so you can get it to just do whatever it needs to do i think they're meant to just touch the ground um yeah so for free slightly back in time but now watch the rest of the video and see me get it working if i get it working ooh. And again, let's see if we can get the rope through there and tie it on without having to disturb these double brass. That looks like a load of nonsense, but it does not look original. Let's see if we can sort it out. Turn this back. The number of turns we think it needs to be. Uh, let's try working it out. One, two, three, and a half.
backfired through the intake. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh some fresh fuel in and then I'll suck the whole lot out. I had to take this out because I've had to tighten that again. It wasn't returning properly. Um, like it wasn't going back in properly. So I've put a load more turns on it, but I had to take that out to do it. Take those stupid brass screws out and put some more in yeah, with washers on this time because they've used another brass nut as a washer for the little nut and it didn't work. So I'll have to find something to go in there. I'll show you when I've done it. Gonna try rivets and washers. That, and I'll see if I can get the riveter on. Oh. oh, that didn't work, did it? Maybe it'll work when there's more on there. Poke that. Oh, no, that's no good. No. Fail. Next. Some M4 screws and some flanged washers with little locking bits. Let's try that. Ah, that's all right, I tightened them up. M4 bolts, M5 washers, just because that's what I had. They seem to have sat nicely against the edge. Stop them moving out and uh, it's in. And it's better. Right, put that back on. Well, I've got that bit working. I just went to put it on, I noticed something. This is really stiff, and I'm gonna suggest that that's the problem there. It's broken. Uh, so, I don't actually know how that comes off. I'll have a look, I'll take those off, see if it comes off. If I can get that off, I'll swap it for one of those other ones. Um, because I can't be bothered to faff around swapping the whole engine over. I'd like to just keep that. Uh, so I'll just swap that bit off one of those mowers. Never looked in one of these before. Let's have a look. Coming apart nicely. Wow, okay, that's nice. Oh, bits, bits. Okay, so there's a ball bearing in there. But weirdly, I found a ball bearing on the floor the other day. Maybe it's out of here. I don't know, it's that one. Okay, let's uh... Oh, it's really raining out there. Uh... Yeah. So how does that come off? Okay, well the stiffness is actually just this, on that shaft. And the brake doesn't look catastrophic. I have to say, I feel like there's a good chance I'd spend longer fighting this off than... Yeah, it looks like it screws on. I think you just knock it. So when you pull the starter, the rope comes off this way, so it turns it clockwise. So just knock that anti-clockwise and it'll unscrew. Let's try, let's try.
Or if that's moving or not. I think it is. There we go. Ah. I mean, it's not catastrophic, but when I've got all those other engines with these on, why use this scabbed up one? Oh, look at, oh, I reckon someone's put a wrench on this, like a Stilson's wrench, rather than tap it off on those. They put a wrench on this bit like that, and the teeth have eaten into it and cracked it. And then salvage another one. New problem. Happened to notice that the flywheel was loose because I'd undone the that, which is actually the securing nut for it. Uh, so I thought, oh, I'll slide it off just in case it needs cleaning. And uh, the keyway, the key was sitting in the keyway there. And I noticed that the keyway is knackered. And if you can just see, it's this side here is too wide. That's never going to work properly. And then I noticed it says, caution, do not use steel key in flywheel. See instructions. So I looked at this, that's a steel key. So, um, more broken bits. Starting to wonder if I should just take a whole engine off one of those mowers, because they're painted very prettily and shove it on here, because I actually want this. It's going to scarify the lawn. Um, it's old, but it's a real nice, heavy, solid machine. Look at all the, I think they're called tines. Loads of them. And they're thick steel. And a modern uh, MTD version of this, with a pressed steel deck that was all floppy. It was in fine condition, it's just floppy. And um, it had half the number of tines as that. They were fixed, they weren't replaceable, and they were thin. This just looks like a better machine. So, um, yeah, I'm really tempted just to swap the whole engine, which is a shame because it will leave one of those mowers without an engine, but this was free. So if this turns into a spares engine and one of those ones comes over here, it's pretty worth it, isn't it? I'll have a think, I'll have a think. So I can't really scavenge one of these engines. So I suddenly realized the other one's five horsepower. These are threes and twos. I think that one I opened up to look at the governor. Uh, that's the one that the governor was the same on. Uh, but actually, I'm going to take apart that one because it's the worst mower, missing its nameplate uh, and it's missing its top cover uh, and all the rest are complete. So this one might as well come apart. So I'm going to take this one apart. And I'm going to see if the and it's missing its pull start. I'm going to see if the pull start. Uh, mechanism in the centre there is the same. I hope it is. Something I just realised is this mesh is meant to be on the flywheel. It's not meant to be on the... All that effort putting it on the pull start thingy, it's not meant to be on it. It's meant to be screwed to that. So I've opened this up. That was the cover. These look really nice, really clean. I'm not gonna faff with them at all. Right then. So I'm gonna put that on. Uh, off of that other engine, I've salvaged the aluminium key. There is, so I can't replace this because this is a different size. So I'm just gonna put it on. Yes, it could fail one day with that damaged keyway, but I'll worry about it when that day comes. I've salvaged the start uh, one way mechanism off that other engine which actually has got four ears on it, and this one's only got two, whether it had four once? No, I don't think it did. Different design, but I've checked it screws on. Uh, and we pulled this off again and checked, and actually it's got four cutouts in it for the holes that match up with this. So that's good. I just need four screws, so I'm gonna have to keep two off the other engines. That's never going back together. Uh, so I'm going to get and assemble this, and I'll shut up now so you can hear the birds singing.
Well, that's better. So that's back on. Uh, and look, that now is attached to the engine like it's supposed to be. And that goes back. Quite happy with that. Took time to clean the carb on this one. Um, it's just one bolt under there for the fuel tank, which is that one. And it'll be that bolt there. And one under there that's really awkward to get to. Uh, and then the whole thing comes off carb on fuel tank. What I'm going to do is undo this bolt here, take this operating arm off. It's going to be easier than fighting this rod that goes down there. I'll take that off and I'm hoping I can twist it over, disconnect it from there and leave this on the engine. It'll just save me a bit of a faff later. Let's see if the plan works. There we go. Perfect. Tap that up there, out the way. spring down the bottom and that rod all right very scuzzy this isn't it i'm gonna give this a bit of a clean over just to just gonna clean around and we're gonna open it up There's just three screws that hold the carb to the tank. I do want to open it up only because I want to have a look at the pickup pipes. Bits like that. Ooh. This is very positive. This is very clean inside. And let's see if I can show and this is very clean as well. Look at that. There we go. I just did another one of these and there was this was full of rust. That's very nice. Um, and I want to take off the double gaskets. They don't want to come off. I could probably reuse those, but I've got new ones, so why would I bother? Two gaskets stuck together. I thought they only were meant to have one, but the kits come with two. I think it's to help block heat from the engine getting to the car. Gasket there actually looks okay, but again, I've got a new one, so let's take it off. Now I get a rag, I'll just clean over a few bits, and then we need to open up this, which is the fuel pump portion of the carb. And that, uh, I think we just need a new diaphragm in there. These are super simple and they're quite reliable. Um, we can replace this as well, so we'll take this out and we'll look at it. I didn't have to replace it on the last one I did. Interestingly, it's got fuel. So it probably was working, actually. Oh, that's a, hmm, it's a bit of a bugger. Oh, I thought this wasn't working. 
And maybe our problem lies elsewhere. Maybe not, maybe it's not working very well. And there's all the bits. Fuel passages are all clear. So these work like a little fuel pump. So that sits on there and on there. Those are your one-way valves and they seal that little nub in there and that one. And the diaphragm over there with the movement of the air on the intake causes a pumping action. So that's a little fuel pump. Let's pop some new bits in it. eBay special carb kit. About six pounds because I bought so many of them. Um, you can get them cheaper if you buy them direct from China, but I bought them from a UK seller. Actually, they're really nicely made. So I'm quite happy. Um, I will take it out and check it, but I may not use the replacement needle here. I didn't need to on the last one. I found that the jet was a different size. Um, to save losing all the bits, we'll build this up now. So this is the body that screws into the carb. Put no ring. You put a washer. Put a spring on the jet and you assemble it in there. And that O-ring seals the brass screw thread here against the aluminium insert. There we go. And that's your main needle assembly. And that goes on top of that inside the carb. I'll show you in a minute. And it has a little washer. We might not need that. To be honest, I bought the kits mostly for these the diaphragms and then the tank gasket. And you also get two gaskets to put on where I cut those other two off. It seems like a bit of a waste, probably not using that, but for the price, there's no point buying the bits individually. There we go. So that's the equivalent of that. There we go. And on this occasion, they're very similar. The last one they were quite different, so I didn't end up swapping it. And there is a main jet in there. <laughs> Have a little compare. Yeah, again, different sizes. So this is a much bigger hole than this one. So I'm gonna put the new one to one side. And again, I'll reuse these. Um, you can swap these once the carb's back on the uh, engine. So I'm not really that bothered about this. I will take the seal off. I'll put the new one on. At least we know we won't get a leak then. And the rest of it looks fine. Does it move? Yep. We'll just leave it. Ah. So you can just see through the jet a little bit when you hold it up to the light. But at the same time, I think there's something in there. I can get me a me jet cleaner. Ah, there was some goo in there. A bit of goo on that one. Let's keep getting bigger until we get to the same size. Right, so it's that size. That's better. There was actually something stuck in there. A bit of dried up fuel or something, I think. 
Well, that might explain a few things. I was use a spray bottle of carb cleaner just to blow in there, under those, into those ones. Let that dry out. I could edit this really nicely to not point out what I did here. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna tell you. I just noticed that I left the shit out. Didn't put that back, did I? There we go. Don't need that gasket, it's for a different engine. What we do need is the fuel tank gasket. Slip that in, get that lined up, and then we'll pop the screws back. choke everything else is back in and we pop this back on the engine all right i'm just gonna put the air filter on this was fitted like that and i've just noticed that i thought i think it goes that way it certainly does it says this side up on it there we go and the air filter sits on there and goes in the middle Whatever reason, this one has a wing nut and then another wing nut. Like that. And then it goes on with that one. It's very late, as you can see, it's dark out there. But, uh,. It's worth a quick go to see if it fires, don't you? This is the on-off switch, it just shorts out the plug. So we'll go with on. We've got a choke, which we pull out. We'll give it a little go. Hmm, curious. 
So we know we've got a starter that works. We had a spark because, hmm. We had a spark because we sprayed Easy Start in and it rang. I think what we need to do is check we've still got one. Let's try putting that super close. Big spark there. So we've got spark. We're not getting fuel. We fiddled with the carb unless. Unless we open up the fuel needle by a turn and a half. This is a job for the morning. So I've lost the spark on this one. Either going to be the coil, the points of the condenser. I'm thinking the coil's probably gone. Uh, it's probably shorting out in there or something. Uh, I did get a, a spark briefly, but it was really weak and it's gone now. Um, so I thought, oh, well, maybe I need to find some spares. Been looking on eBay for ages. Trying to find bits. And then realised that this that was undercover appears to have the same engine. So uh, I'm going to try and rub this. I pulled this over. Came out of a barn, quite literally a barn find. This was going to be a little will it start type bit of fun. I reckon it's worth scavenging. And I'll probably take the flywheel as well and replace that one on the other engine. The worn out keyway, assuming this one's any good. Strip it and have a look. I think the filters might be a bit old in this. Right, let's get this one blown apart so we can get the bits off it that we need for the right one. I think it broke it, but the uh, starter mechanism's come apart. I don't think it's broken, but it's in lovely condition actually. Let's see if we can get that back together in a minute. I think we can. That's back together. It actually looks like the top is retained by the screws that hold the mesh down. Bash that too hard. It only looks much better conditioned. Yeah, let's save this one. I've tried to put a puller together, and uh, I mean, it's a big puller. I couldn't get it underneath the flywheel, so all I've done is <laughs> I haven't got a handle, I've got a copper head. Give it a few. Let's try pulling upwards. Oh, wouldn't it needed. Look at that. Oh, look at a key. Lovely. Look at that. Much better. Give that a quick clean up. And I think we also need the coil because I suspect the coil is the problem. So, we'll salvage that. That's interesting. Here's the wire that goes to the... Oh, it's different. The one had a... 
points and stuff in here, didn't it? This one does not. Where's, it? Where's the wire go? Disappearing somewhere this way. I'm assuming this is just the cut-off switch. Ugh. You know what? It's got a connector. All right, well, I'll compare that to the other one and see if the white, there's a connector in the same place. I reckon this is a different design. Um, let's get the other one over here and have a look. The flywheel, I'll clean that up with just a stiff brush and that looks a lot nicer. Cleaned all the, the goo out of it. Now, we know the fly, the key, what well, keyway on this one is damaged. Uh, it might do in an emergency, so we're going to swap those. We've got the ignition module, and what I've done is I've taken it out of the engine, and I also, I didn't want to cut the wire, I took the condenser out and just took it with it. Still got the spark plug on it, and I'll show you the issue it's going to cause in a minute. So this one we think might be dead, I'm not sure. I'll put that on that side, and this is the one that came out of the awful mower. And it's an electronic ignition module, I was right. It's, so this is the pickup that fires it. Um, I did watch a YouTube video, uh, and I can't remember the name of the chap's channel, but he knew what he was talking about. And basically they are a direct swap. You just cut out completely the points and the condenser, and this does everything all in one, which is great. Um, now that wire on the back was the stop wire. The way that engine works over there is it's just got that little shorting out thing that shorts the spark plug out. Um, but it needs to better get to the top of the spark plug. So I'm either going to have to cut off this rubber or hopefully just slide it back for now. Um, I'll work that out in a minute. Um, just as like a proof of concept. Otherwise I'm going to have to add a switch and I don't really want to. Seems like a lot of effort, but not really much gain. Get the flywheel mounted then. And we're going to use the new keyway that we've salvaged out of the SCSI mower over there. Interesting noise. Let's just pretend we didn't hear that. Um, all right, pop the key in. Get the flywheel mounted. Lovely. Now there should be a washer, uh, one big washer, which is dished and it looks like it goes that way, so dished outwards. And we have the starter slash securing nut. Just a bit hand tight for now. Cool. All right, so electronic ignition module. And the screws off the other engine because the screws stayed in the other one. Oh, I haven't got the air deflector. There we go. So that slips on there, and the screw secures it, which also secures this on the key. So we do need to set the gap between the flywheel and the coil. So you can see it moves a little bit. Let's see if I can show you a bit better actually, hold on. So this gap here needs to be set for it to work if it effectively and efficiently. Uh, and I've read and heard that it's meant to be a 10 thou gap, 10 thousandths of an inch. And I don't want to put my feeler gauges in there because they'll get horrible. Um, so I went and found some paper out of the recycling bin from a cam belt kit. Uh, three layers of it. Boop. 10 thou. So three layers of this particular piece of paper will do nicely. And I've torn it rather than fold it so that the folded edge doesn't get too thick and space this out. So we'll lift that up, slide that in. Yeah. And then get these done up. Right, get that right. Get that 
tweak. And then hopefully, oh, right, that's a bit tight. Not really a sliding fit, that is it. Good. So now we need to deal with the coil problem. So I'm going to try and poke this out of there with something. Screwdriver. I don't want to completely damage it if this doesn't work and it has to go back on the other engine. Oh, here we go. Ah, perfect. That's what I was after. Oh, well, there. Check this gap. Don't know what it should be. Let's find out. Hold on. 30 thou, apparently. It was 25, so I've set it to 30. I mean, a new spark plug would be nice, but I don't have one like that at the moment. And I don't think the plug's what's causing the issue. I wonder what the plug's like in the other one. Hold on. Horrendous. I just looked at it rotten. So. Not worry about that. Right, so I can't have that all the way down there because it'll end up snaggled up. Let's have this like that. That needs closing up. Seems good, like that. That boot gives it a lovely corner. That'll work. That doesn't work. It doesn't touch it. Why does it touch it? Why did it touch the other one? Is it just bent? Maybe it's not meant to touch it. Maybe it just gives it a gap. I don't know. We'll play with it in a minute. I guess it, you could do that and then it touch the... I'll work it out in a minute. Let's just get this thing running first. Otherwise I'm gonna have to connect the kill wire. Annoying. I wonder if we could prove if this works. Oh, I am getting a little spark there. Even at those slow speeds. Well, that's good. Hey, if I do it like that, it kind of touches the touches the thing. I don't know. We'll see. Um, let's get this done up. these pieces back on one of the pieces That doesn't touch that. I don't know if it's meant to. Maybe it needs bending. Now it touches it. I think it just needs a little bend. Well. Wow. Do we think? Do we think it's going to run? I mean, I'm feeling confident, but apprehensive. Oh no, look what I've done. I've left the right, hang on. I have fixed the side. Ah. Let's 
just uh, let it go. Right, choke. Ignition is on, surely. This does not look good. Okay, so that's a fuel issue then. So let's try opening this valve. Try choking it. partially choking it. So it ran, I think on easy start, but the starter jammed, so I shut it off. Very excited. Something's wrong here. Um, the uh, starter got all unwound. Mm. I think. Bless me. Bless me. Wind up. I think that. The starter one-way mechanism that I've put in there is sticking because when I just when it made that noise I pulled that it just pulled all the way out it had unwound it so hmm swap the one off the other engine it's not hard let's swap it swap it for the one off the other engine that got busted open. And uh, there's no threads in those, but I'm hoping that they'll just self-tap in. They've got a little self-tap in bit on them. Should tap into those threads. I think it wouldn't hurt to put a little bit of oil and grease on there. It'll be oil, not grease. Grease is a bit sticky. A little bit of oil. Try again. I was putting this air filter on. Probably being ambitious again, aren't I? Putting the air filter on, being all brave. Come on then. Choke.
And I did have to, that first time it ran, when the, just before the start I went wrong, did have to adjust the fuel mixture screw. It's running really nice. All right, fine, we need to get the belt changed and we can actually test the machine. So when I first bought this, Googled it and found out what belt it needed and bought one really ambitiously thinking, oh, I'll get that running. And I have, but obviously it's taken a while. I've just noticed that the exhaust actually got a hole in it. Um, the exhaust like on that other engine. Much worse. So we're gonna pretend that that's not there. So this is the clutch. I'm hoping that I just take this off. What do we reckon? It'd be amazing if this spanner fitted it. It doesn't. Does this fit it? It doesn't. Fine. Let's just get a lazy spanner. all it needs oh yeah wow okay so there's the clutch and apparently i bought the right belt but let's um let's check how do you get it past the wheels i don't know Bolt the wheels, have I? That'd be well annoying. You probably do be replacing, but let's leave it for now. Well, let's abuse it, but that works. Uh, run it between the wheels. All right. Oh look, the belt's wrong. It's gonna be the wrong size, isn't it? Why? Why can I never have the right belt? That is miles wrong. Hey, piss taking bastards. Who knows what that says? Hey, okay, brilliant. Well, let's test it with this belt. Back through there, get that. Back through there. Oh, that's not easy. And let's get that back up there. See how noisy that is. We'll leave the cover off. Don't need that. Uh, quick oil check before I run it anymore. He says. It has oil. I may have even checked that before, but I can't remember. I may have even changed the oil. Can't remember. Well, I can't run it in here because it will eat the floor.
doing something. Seems to work. I think that worked pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. It doesn't really need any more adjustment, to be honest. Um, it looks scabby, but it's not getting any paint. The uh, the height adjuster works. That works by that's the mechanism that drops it down. So that drops it down, and it literally just sits against that and stops the handle going anymore. So that's for transport. Um, the engine ran fine, no smoke. A little bit of a crack in the exhaust, but honestly, uh, the amount this is going to get used, I'm not going to bother fixing it. Um, this worked. It's a bit Heath Robinson, but it'll do. Um, the clutch worked. The belt looks a bit old, but actually, I think it'll do for now. Um, even though it's listed as an A31 belt in the manual, and I bought an A31 belt, it didn't fit, obviously, because I have bad luck with belts. Um, so that's pretty much it. I'm pretty happy with that. For a free machine, I fixed it with parts from a free machine. Um, I don't think I've spent a, a penny on that. Oh, no, tell a lie. Air filter, carb kit. Okay, so we're up to like a tenner. Pretty happy. I'm going to keep that. Nice industrial, really strong machine. Did a little bit of scarifying out there, but that's an autumn job, so I don't really want to do it now. It's midsummer. Um, I'll probably damage the grass more than do it a favour. I'm going to put this away now. Oh, yeah, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Um, subscribe to the channel, see what else I'm fixing. There's always something being fixed somewhere. I don't do videos on absolutely everything, but the interesting stuff, I will. Um, yeah, give a thumbs up at the bottom. That way I know people like it. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video. Thanks. All right, so you found a step. A step to get up to the top, yeah? You lot are daft. Oh. Come on. I'll stay in the garage all day.